Good morning. This is Sarah Satch with Posh Pooch Designs. Today is our live video chat. And in case you don't know, every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time, I try to have a live video chat here on the Facebook page. Looks like I'm off center a little. There we go. <laughs> My desk is filled with so much fun stuff today and so many questions that I want to answer for you that I don't have even room for my mouse to move around. So we have tons to talk about today. I hope that everyone had a super fun Halloween and that everybody was super safe and got lots of good chocolate and candy. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Michelle. I'm glad you're here. Now let's remember to clink in. Clink! <laughs> I've got my polka dot cup today. I'm feeling a little polka dot-ish, I guess. <laughs> I am drinking just my regular old Dunkin' Donuts coffee today. <laughs> All right, now I want to just answer a couple of questions I got over the weekend real quick. And one of them was, how do I keep my hands from getting super dry because I'm working with yarn so much? And I have two lotions that I use. This one is called Jason's. You can see it's the coconut, soothing coconut. It works fantastic. It takes a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. Works fantastic rubbing it around your nails and things. And this is one that I super love, but it also has a, a super strong scent of coconut. I think it's got coconut and lanolin in it. Shea butter, that's the smell, shea butter. But I love this. It's a little pricey. I found it at Target and King Supers, which is Kroger brand, and then also um, Walmart. Okay, another lotion that I use to keep my hands soft is this one. And this is made by Jaffra. Let's turn that. And my friend gave me this. My friend Tracy sells Jaffra. And she gave me this for Christmas last year. And you can see it's well used. It's like half empty. And it, again, only takes a teeny tiny bit. And um, let's see. This is Nourishing Hand and Nail Cream. Looks like it has oatmeal and honey. And so lotion is really, really important, but you've got to be careful because if you use one that's too greasy, that residue can get on your yarn and we don't want that. So those are the two lotions that I try to use on my hands, Jason's Nourishing Coconut and this Jaffra Oatmeal and Honey. Just a tiny bit. Um, one of the places I have trouble is in these edges of my nails. And so I'll rub that in. So that's a question that I got this week. Another question that I got is where to find, let me pull this out. Remember, um, I was told about the Simply Soft um, party. I'm looking at it going, what does that say? <laughs> um, I, they were asking me, I got two emails and then a note on Facebook, where can you find this? And okay, I bought this one at Walmart. I have also seen it at, Tar uh, not Target. I've also seen it at Michael's and Joann's. But you can also buy it online. The other question I got is where can you find this one? And this is the I Love This Yarn Metallic. It can only be bought at Hobby Lobby. That is their brand. I went back in to get some more of the White Sparkle and I discovered that they have a peach sparkle and I've used the pink sparkle before and they also have this color here it's like a mint and I had not seen the peach and the mint before so I thought I'd show you those yes they have the red the green and the white and they have an off-white and a variegated uh, Christmas colors that are all sparkle and so then I noticed these they also have like a cranberry and I think they used to have orange and black but I haven't checked for those lately so I thought I would tell you about those and since we're talking yarn first this week I located this yarn and I usually for my sock monkey items I was using the Vanis Choice but I can't seem to find it in this color and it used to be called I want to say Top Mist Taupe 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 Mist and I couldn't find it and it had I think two and a half or three ounces on it and so I discovered this one this is by the same 
I love this yarn, Hobby Lobby. This is called Stone Wash. And I believe it, the color is Walnut. Let me see. Yes. And it looks exactly like that yarn. So I'm going to start using this one for my sock monkey things. So I hope that answered your question, where to find the sparkle yarns. The I Love This Metallic is only at Hobby Lobby, but the Karen Simply Soft Party can be found at Walmart, Joann's, and Michael's, and of course, online. So I thought I'd answer those two questions before we started our conversation. Hello, everyone. I see Elizabeth here. Elizabeth's my daughter. I see Jen. Let's see. I don't have my glasses on. Fotini, Michelle. I hope I said hello to everybody. Keep coming in and clink in. I'm going to take a little sip. And don't forget, my dentist said that if you use a little short straw, it'll keep that coffee off your teeth and they'll stay whiter longer. All right. So today's conversation, we're going to be talking about what is freeform crochet. And um, I have to tell you kind of a funny story about this. <clears throat> I love freeform crochet. And a lot of people call it painting with yarn because you can use any yarn that you have, no matter how thin or how thick it is, and combine it together to form some fun things. Let me click down to my top cam real quick so you can see what I have here. Now, I made a couple of these hearts. I saw a picture online and there is a pattern for a heart on Ravelry. And one thing to remember is with freeform crochet, there are no patterns, there are no stitch counts, there are no specific ways of doing it, but there are a few free patterns on Ravelry and on the line, online, on the line, <laughs> online that you can use to get you started. And this is two that I made just for fun, just by making pieces, sticking them together. Looky here, I've got some fuzzy yarn and some bumps. <clears throat> different texture same with this one I've got a flower I've got the spiral and this okay just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like one thing I found out about freeform crochet it is very relaxing when you're uptight when you're stressed out you can grab any yarn that you have on on hand and just start making something don't count your stitches don't count your style and when you run out turn around go the other way or keep going in a different direction it is the neatest neatest thing all right now one of the things that freeform crochet is about is a word called scrumbling or scrumbles and this is what was so funny a few years ago i was talking to a lady and she kept talking about scrambling crochet and i had no idea what she was talking about and she was a sweet lady had a little bit of a southern accent and i met her at the gym at the pool nice nice lady and as a matter of fact we still talk about crochet every time i see her but she kept talking about scrambling crochet and i thought what is scrambling crochet i have no idea and so when i started investigating a little more about freeform crochet i discovered that because she had a southern accent her scrambling was, was actually scrumbling. She was saying scrambling crochet. <laughs> I can't do it now. I've been out of the South so long. I've lost my Southern accent. But anyway, one of the terms that's used is called scrumble or scrumbles or scrumbling. And what you do is you make pieces like this. This is just like a half piece. This is one that I did the very first piece. It's just a spiral. And then I did some different extra things around the edges and you can take swatches of pieces that you've made maybe you tested out a new pattern here's one that's a spiral here's one that's a rainbow and pastels and this is a fun one I love doing it like this you're just making chains hooking them and making a stitch go back and you can do whatever you want with it and you you'd make all these scrumbles and as you're making them, it's called scrumbling. <laughs> and the thing to remember about this, once you make all these pieces, you can hook them all together and make something wonderful. And I know you've probably seen like where they've done the scrumbling on the back of a vest and then they start going around and then they make it into one of those round vests or they've made a coat, a scarf or anything that you want to make. 
they'll be one of a kind pieces of art. Now I want to I want to read some of the things that I wrote down. You can choose a color theme or you can go with what you've got. In other words, you can add fun fur, chunky, thin, whatever you want to make a piece. And that's why when I did this one here, I added this purple fun fur because I had a little bit of it. I just added a flower in the middle and you just keep going. Now this one I made in three pieces. I made a square, I made two circles. I hooked them together and then I just kept going with it. It was so much fun. And I just use all my leftover yarns. I've got a basket over there <laughs> that has a whole bunch of leftover yarns, thick and thin, different textures. I mix wool and acrylic and alpaca, whatever I got, because I'm not going to wash it. It's going to be a piece of art. And I'm hoping, I'm making some more of these hearts and some more pieces, and I'm gonna make just a wall hanging, and I'm gonna hang it up. And when I get it done, I will show it to you so that you can see it. Now, the neat thing about this, like I said, is that there are no stitch counts. There are no exact patterns. There are patterns out there that can help you. But all you need to do is rely on your imagination and some of the things that you know. You want to learn a new stitch? Practice it on the edge of one of your scrumbles. You want to learn a new technique, a new style? Practice it and then save it as a scrumble and add it to what you're making and you'll come up with some of the best pieces of art. And I have come across some, when I, like when I was first learning how to do the crocodile stitch, I have some that I'm going to use. And some other things, another one is the bullion stitch that's used a lot. I do really encourage you, um, I, I, you know, when I do a live video, I always make a blog to go with it. And on that blog, I added a link towards the middle. And on that, in that, you click that link and it just takes you straight to Ravelry and it's already set up that you can find a bunch of um, free form and scramble patterns. Go ahead and practice. And some of the ones that are the most popular are the spiral ones like this and the ones that, see I've got some weird different stitches in there that combine those. Also, um, this style is the neatest thing. I'm going to keep going with this one, and I think I'm going to make me like a scarf or something. And I, I, this is one that I just love. But you'll find ones like this that have spirals. You'll also find, um, oh, what's the one called? Paisley's. That's the other one I was looking for. And just lots of other things. Good morning. I think I missed a few people in there. Hi, Susie. Hi, Rosier Rosiero. Glad you're with us today. Clink in. And someone asked me the other day, what does clink in mean? When you're saying hello, you just clink your cups together. And that's what that's all we're doing. It's just something fun. And of course, the other night I've been I've been drinking a lot of tea. And so I was thinking, oh, maybe I want some of my tea this morning. But I didn't. I've got my good old Dunkin' Donuts coffee. All right. So when you're making your scrambles, there is no set colors unless you want to be all in one color scheme there is no set pattern unless you're looking for some that you want to add to it you don't have to count your stitches you don't have to stay within any color scheme you go as you want to in other words crochet as you go add bumps and puff stitches and shells and all kinds of fun things and like I said it's a great way to practice a few stitches that you want to learn now the bullion stitch is one that's kind of um, difficult for me just because I'm a little uncoordinated <laughs> and so I'm practicing that and I'm gonna add some of that to my uh, piece of art as well so anyway just to top that off let me go back through some of the things that I said so when you're doing freeform crochet, you're basically painting with yarn. And the only limit is your imagination and what you know about crochet. You can add any colors, stripes. You can use, like I said, you can use thick and thin, fuzzy. You can use wool. Unless you're going to wash it, like for instance, if you're going to make a sweater or something and you do want to wash it, 
Oh, can't wait to see what I do with the bullion stitch. Yeah, that one is a little tricky, and I am practicing it. So some of the ones I add may be a little... Hmm. <laughs> it is a really cool stitch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Need a little coffee. I really encourage you to do some of this. And do a little investigating online. Go in and Google freeform crochet. Go in and Google the word scrumbles or scrumbling. And I think you'll find lots of neat pieces of art. And the thing about it is, like I said, you don't have to follow the pattern. Even if you go in to Ravelry and, and pull up some free patterns that you wanna try and yours turns out different, who cares? It's a piece of art and it's something that you can make for yourself. And another thing, like I said, when I originally sat down and started making these hearts, for my project, I discovered that I was calm and relaxed. My mind was off the troubles of the world or issues in family or issues in life or anything like that that you may be dealing with. You know, I just sat down and this one has a lot of pink in it. And so I was thinking about my sister Lisa that passed away not long ago. And I was thinking about all the fun times that we had and it made me relax. And so I think that the, the thing about freeform crochet, because you're not counting stitches, because you're not working so hard to get everything to um, work out perfectly, it's art and you can just relax and have fun with it. And like I said, I've got that big basket of yarn over there and I'm hoping to be able to come up with something really, really pretty. And I'm going to make just a big piece of wall art. And, um, you know, I've, I've tried my hand at painting like my, <laughs> my basket back there that I painted last summer when I had my granddaughter here and we were doing a little fun painting. <clears throat> and I love to paint, but it's, it's not my best art. And crochet is. It's my best art. I love yarn. I love the way that it moves around the pieces. You know, how you can finagle it and make bumps and lines and swirls and all kinds of things. Hook all those pieces together and make a wonderful piece of art. And that's why they call it painting with yarn. Painting with yarn because you're basically making a portrait or making a thing and I, I'm telling you there are some people that do freeform crochet that have made actual portraits of people that when you look at them they are magnificent pieces of art and I'm not that good of course I'm still learning but it's a lot of fun and it's something that you can pick up and work on if you just have a couple of hours or even 10 minutes and and work on it add some some different things to it set it aside you've got orders or you've got other things that you're working on then when you get some free time pick it back up and and do it again so <clears throat> we talked about scrumbling that's all your pieces these are scrumbles not scrambles <laughs> I thought that was the cutest thing when she had that accent. And putting them together and making wonderful pieces of art that you don't have to count stitches, you don't have to have the perfect yarn, and you know what? You don't even have to have the perfect crochet hook. <laughs> I switch around all the time because I want some things to be bigger and some things to be smaller. And so you can use whatever crochet hook, crochet hook, see I can have my southern accent every now and then. You can use whatever crochet hook that you have on hand. And yes, she says, I think that's what we need, relaxing time while we create a beautiful project without stress. And I think that is true. I think uh, a lot of times, especially this time of year, I'm working really hard getting my orders done and I wanna make sure I get them out in time for the holidays. And <clears throat> then I'm making Christmas presents or something else and I'm a little bit stressed. And, uh, you know, and in life, life can stress you out. Like I said, family, people, friends, you know, whatever's going on, work. It can all stress you out. So it's nice to have, I'm getting a little dry again. It's nice to have a time when you can just sit down, you can relax and just make some fun, make some art. I've really enjoyed it. <clears throat> so freeform crochet is painting with yarn. There are no rules, no stitch counts, and your limits are only your imagination. So go out there, Google it, have some fun, and do some freeform crochet. All right, that's just my little talk. I wanted to tell you about something that I saw on the news this morning. <clears throat> 
um, if you go to my regular Facebook page, I posted it there, but Tiffany's has a ball of spun silver yarn that they're selling. Let me look at my thing down here. They're selling it for $9,000. And I think that's just <laughs> amazing. <laughs> my brain first goes, ooh, I want that. But do I, I'm not spending no $9,000 on a ball of yarn. But it is spun silver, right? Sterling silver. And so then my thought was, I wonder what the weight is, which hook I would use. How thick is it? <laughs> so there's your funny thought for the day. Go check it out. Go to Tiffany's website uh, or go over to my Facebook page. It's, I posted the picture there. It just looks like a silver ball of yarn. <laughs> Nothing special, really. Okay, so before I let you go, let me show you what's going on this week at Posh Pooch Designs. Now, yesterday I did the video for this month's square. This is the November topaz, yellow topaz square. I tried to make it look a little bit like a stone there in the middle, you know. And um, if you haven't been following along, every month I designed a six inch scro crochet square. A six inch crochet square. I guess that's a little tricky to say. And the inspiration of each month was the birthstone. And I'm using the jeweler's list. Someone uh, commented, that's not the one. I think it was last month. I said, I'm using the jeweler's list, the stones. And so this month's was yellow topaz. And so this is our six inch square. We have one more. I'm trying to think of what next month's is. I want, la I, let's see, last month's was rose quartz. I have to look at my list, but we have one more um six inch square and then in january we're going to put all our squares together and make a project and i think you're really going to like it because it's something fun and useful so that was yesterday's video and this pattern on my blog is the written pattern it's a photo tutorial and the and the video on youtube so that's what happened yesterday and then i also have for this week you know i'm doing a series on vintage crochet patterns with a modern twist and so this week's is this hot pad. When I first got married, I was given some of these that someone had made. And of course, I've been married 35 years now. And they it was in yellow and white. And yellow is my favorite color, and I loved them. When they made them, they made them with these plastic rings inside. I think you got them off cans of pop then. I've only seen them on Gatorades uh, now. And they crocheted around them. And they made it out of acrylic yarn. Well, I didn't know that acrylic yarn would melt. And I, because back then I just didn't know. And that the ring in the middle would melt if you set something really hot on it. And so what I've done is I've made them out of cotton. Here's a Christmas one. This is a Christmas one. And then this one I made in just bright colors. This was my test one. And what I've done is I've made them out of cotton yarn. I've eliminated the acrylic and eliminated the plastic inside. So you can use these without burning anything up. And, and what happened with the yellow one is we ran a rental house years ago. We were in the Air Force. And I set it on the counter. <clears throat> I pulled out something out of the oven and set it on there. And the casserole dish burnt through the acrylic and then burnt the counter. And it was a rental, so I felt really bad about that. Never, ever use acrylic on anything you're going to put anything hot on. If it's just for show and you're going to hang it up and it's pretty, fine. But if you're going to use it for anything hot, do not use acrylic yarn. And so that's the pattern. We're going to do this one tomorrow. It'll be a written pattern as well as a photo tutorial and a video as well. <clears throat> And then the end of the week, we're going to go, I showed you the uh, American Girl doll dress last week. I've had a request for it uh, to go ahead and, and do the video for it. So I'm going to go ahead and probably do that on Friday. Okay. So this is our video for today. That's all I've got for you. I hope you'll go out and do some free form crochet and make some scrumbles. And just sit down and relax for just a few minutes and get the stress of the world off your shoulders and have a fantastic week.